me. And he just kept slowly backing his army up and making a circle, a half circle out of it. So the Persians would kind of go into the middle and then he signaled his cavalry that came riding over the hill and they attacked the Persians from behind, completely surrounded, destroys them. He captures Hira and then on the way, so see where it says Peraz uh, Sabur? That is Anbar, the city of Anbar in Iraq, in Iraq today. He's heading towards that place. That's where he wants to go. And he's going to fight three battles, one after the other, in succession. And here's what he does. So there were 60,000 Persian soldiers in three separate armies, 20,000 each. And they're coming for him. And by this, time, by this point, he's down to 15,000 men. Because even though he keeps winning, he's still taking losses. So it's going to be four to one odds if he lets those three Persian armies merge together. And he's thinking, I don't think I can beat 60,000 men with 15,000 men. So if I'm going to win, I'm going to have to attack them piecemeal. I'm going to have to hit each of the three Persian units before they get together. So he races his army as fast as he can towards the first one. But first, he cuts his army into three 5,000 man units. And he, and he tells them, we're, we're going to arrive at 2 a.m. And he gives them a date, like two weeks in advance. And he says, I need you at this location, at this time, on this day. Go. And they take three different paths. And they're going to they're gonna come at this Persian unit. And he's guessing where he thinks that Persian unit will have arrived to by that point. I challenge you. This is my challenge. Three of you, you and two of your best friends, get into three separate cars. And you can use GPS. Pick a spot somewhere on the other side of the US, because it needs to be a long road trip, right? Three days. Not, I don't, I'm not even going to make it two weeks, just three days. So I don't care where you want to go, Washington or the other Washington. Either way, it'll work out to be about the same. But make the three of you take three separate paths and then time it so that you arrive at the exact same moment. Bet you can't do it. Now take away GPS <laughs> and navigate at night, trying to guess where you think the enemy army is going to be. They're there when the three armies converge at the exact same moment. They catch the Persians asleep in their camp. They tear them to pieces. He's like, all right, one down, two to go. He looks at his men and goes, this is where the Persian army, the next one's going to be. And he tells them, I want you there this day, this time. Go. Three different ways. And the three units charge as fast as they can. And they get there. And the Persian army is there. And he destroys that one too. And then he tells his men, all right, we got one more. One more. And go. And they arrive at the right time on the right day, in the spot where the Persians were at night, and they wiped out the third 20,000 man unit with almost no losses. They dispatched 60,000 men in a maneuver that I bet a contemporary military force would never be able to execute, let alone three times in a row. Insane. It shouldn't be believable. He gets to where it says Dura. That's the city of Firaz. Firaz was the border between the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. The Persians and the Romans hated each other's guts. They had been fighting each other. Six, 628 plus 52, right? It was 53 BC, the Battle of Karhae, but there's no year zero. So you have to subtract one. That's why I'm doing 52. So what, what is 28 plus 52? 80. For 680 years, the Romans and the Persians had been fighting each other. Can you comprehend 680 years of war? For, like, I don't even know what that means. What, do you, what does that even mean? By the time Khalid ibn Walid gets to Firaz, 
The Persians and the Romans looked at each other and went, we are no, you are no longer the enemy. We have a new enemy. I don't know where these guys even came from. Because you have to remember, at, the, at this point in time, the Persians had been an empire for 1,200 years. And the Romans had officially been an empire, calling themselves an empire for 600 years, but they had been imperial for the 300 before that, because even before Rome was an empire, it owned Spain, it owned North Africa, it owned Syria, it owned Turkey, it owned Greece, right? And so you have 900 years of imperial history for the Romans and 1,200 years of imperial history for the Persians. There's 21 centuries between those two empires. And they're also technologically the most advanced civilizations on earth. And they had massive populations compared to the Arabs. They're down because of malaria, but the Arabs don't have any rivers. They don't have the agricultural capacity to support large populations. The Arabs are outnumbered, they're out technologied, they're out moneyed, they're out experienced, they're out equipped. And Khalid in one year has captured Iraq. Our military was there for eight years. We didn't capture anything. We captured IEDs in the face. So the, the Persians go to the Romans, they're like, okay, we're gonna fight this one as allies, right? And the Romans are like, yes, yeah, we're good. Because in the meantime, an Arab army has attacked from this side and is trying to get to Jerusalem. And so the Romans know that the, that the Arabs, you're outnumbered, you're out technology, you're out money, and you're facing two empires. Do you attack both at the same time? That makes no sense, but it's exactly what the Arabs did. They attacked the two oldest, most powerful empires at the same time, even though they were outnumbered by one, let alone both. And so the Romans are like, yeah, yeah, we'll work with you. So at Firaz, the combined Roman and Persian armies, which by the way, was largely made up of Christian Arabs, not, in, not completely, but there was a huge contingent, probably about 50,000 Christian Arabs. The combined Persian and Roman army was 150,000 men against 15,000 Muslim Arabs. So Khaled arrives. Khaled is on the east bank of the Euphrates. The Persians and the Romans are on the west bank. There's a ford and a bridge, which is convenient if you're moving an army. It's nice. And so Khaled is on the, Khaled needs the Persians and the Romans to cross the river to fight. So he very politely backs his army up from the bridge and the ford and split it into three 5,000 man units, he liked that. And he put one up river, one down river, and then pulled the other one away from the river. And he just waited. So the Persians and the Romans start to cross the bridge and the, they're also crossing the ford at the same time. And he waits and he waits and he waits. And then he does a prayer as he's waiting. And he says, God, if you give me this victory, I will go to Mecca and I will do the Hajj. I know I'm going to die. I know there's no way we're going to defeat 150,000 men today. But that's what I will do. I'll, go, I'll run and I'll do the Hajj. And, uh, and I'm actually happy that I get to die as a warrior here today. When 50,000 Persians and Romans had crossed the Euphrates, he blew a horn. The men that were up and down river attacked them by going along the river bank and tried to then merge at the bridge and the ford so that they would cut the guys who had crossed off from the guys on the other side. Then what Khaled did was he took the 5,000 men who, against 50,000, and he has them charge into him. And he had, the, he had his men as thin as possible. And then he backs his men up. And then he charges again, and then he backs his men up, and he charges again. And every time his horses go in to those men, it, it compressed them a little bit. It compressed them a little bit more. 
So after a while, the Persians and the Romans are so compressed, they can't move their arms, they can't swing their weapons. He's just compacted them together. And they realize what he's done to them. And they panic, and they turn around to run back to the river to cross it. 50,000 men turning all at once to stampede. You could hear the bones breaking. And then the Muslim Arabs just went in and started killing them as they're running. By the time the battle was done, 200 Muslim Arabs were dead. 50,000 Persians and Romans were dead. What, what is this? <laughs> Khaled's like, 